Hello and welcome, my dear friends, to yet another new, thrilling and exciting episode of Simply Electric. Yes, we've got the brand new Volvo EX30. As a single engine, meaning rear wheel drive, equipped with the large battery pack, 69 kilowatt gross, 64 kilowatt net, and we want to take you on a road trip from Neustrelitz to Kiel. I'm heading to Kiel for work. Also got invited to a soccer game there. We want to do some sightseeing with you guys. And let's see if the Volvo X30 is a perfect companion even for longer distances. So we've got about a good 300 kilometers one way to Kiel and another good 300 kilometers back, plus a few kilometers there on site. And there we want to see then on a total distance of around 700 kilometers, how does the Volvo EX30 perform? I'd say before we set off, please have a look. If you're in the Simply Electric community, great. If not, consider subscribing and then you won't miss videos like this. Now let's go off to Kiel with the Volvo X30. We've now set off, all ready to hit the open road with a 93% state of charge, which essentially means it's nearly almost fully charged. The range is displayed as 442 kilometers. Strangely, every time it's fully charged, it reverts to the WLTP range. Somehow I've got this feeling that it doesn't really take into account the last consumption from the onboard computer, so to speak, to then perhaps calculate the range a bit upwards. Somewhat strange, but perhaps there will be an update eventually that might optimize that slightly. Yeah, we have already driven quite long distances with it, you know, I'll reset it now. For our upcoming trip to Kiel, we obviously managed to obtain quite absolutely precise values right here as well. We now have a somewhat lengthy stretch of rural road ahead of us, approximately 40, 50 kilometers to the highway. That's how it is here in Mecklenburg. You have to drive an hour to the highway first. And the starting point is 12 degrees. We've installed winter tires in 19 inches, Stefan. Yep. From the age of 40, I do believe. And yes, it appears it's raining just a tiny bit at this moment. So these are indeed the perfect conditions for embarking on a road trip with the Volvo X30. Wouldn't you agree? We want to take another look at it together on the map, and we've entered it into the Google Maps system. Volvo uses Google Automotive and thus Google Maps for navigation, you see. And here you can clearly see it's actively making a comprehensive charging plan for us. I don't quite get it why it shows us. Um, for a total distance of 309 kilometers, a range of 439 kilometers displayed, then sort of at 47% in Wittenburg, which lies approximately 20 kilometers before reaching Hamburg, to charge fully. Well, but we have the capability to control this individually and can also efficiently replace the charging point. This is all manageable within the navigation system. But in the end, one would also want a system that provides the best advice from the start and possibly guides you to the charging station with a 10% battery level. I'd suggest we keep an eye on it during our trip we're driving on the A24 towards Wittenberg anyway, so we can decide on the fly how and where we recharge. We are currently positioned right before the highway, having successfully tackled the 50 kilometers of rugged country road trekking. Average speed 64 km h, we truly put the pedal to the metal wherever it feasibly was possible. Yes, 49.6 kilometers and a consumption of 21.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's, I think, quite ambitious, perhaps even a bit too much for such a small, very compact SUV. Wouldn't you agree? Even today with only 10 degrees and some drizzle, because I remember in my EQS having considerably lower consumption, right? So, friends of the night, I've made myself quite comfy here on the passenger seat. No, just kidding. I've got to do some work, of course. And dear Stefan took the helm here in the Volvo X30. Stefan, how's your driving impression? Very good, continue. I hope it's about rain. Let it drizzle. Very good. Stop at Wittenberg, then Kiel, offering a delightful blend of heritage and beauty as we journey through these historic and scenic regions. Near the historic notable town of Wittenberg, a torrent of heavy rain relentlessly cascaded from the especially thick, ominous clouds hanging overhead. And yes, most charging stations aren't covered, just like in Wittenberg as well. That's still reserved for drivers of combustion engine cars. And then we said, before we get completely soaked while charging, let's just drive a bit further because the Volvo EX30 still has a good 30% battery left. Giving it a decent range, 
so we can get a bit further. Yes, Stefan, of course, tried once again to mimic my deer-like gentle throttle foot even on the highway at around 130, 140. Sadly, he failed that, didn't he, Stefan? Indeed, quite the feat when one takes the country road instead of the freeway, isn't it? Yes, let's take a look at the numbers. Stefan managed to increase the average speed to 98 km h now, indeed. We've covered 161 km, consuming 27.7 kWh per 100 km. He's now got 23 left in the battery. Since it's really started raining heavily here, consumption has noticeably, one might say, significantly dropped. So it seems the Volvo EX3 doesn't really like that. Well, neither do I, sitting here in the passenger seat. Why? Because this test vehicle, unfortunately, does not have the passenger seat package with the electric adjustment and therefore no height leveling. Unfortunately, the standard seat doesn't have that, which I find very disappointing. It often happens in electric cars that the passenger seat doesn't have any seat height adjustment. It's such a flaw. I take it personally because being around 6'1", I end up sitting somewhat perched up like at a dining table. And Stefan's got it nice and comfy, flat, nicely reclined. <laughs> with those short legs. Because, let's be honest, usually I'm always sitting in the back right to work. But, of course, that makes even less sense in the X30 model. We're in the small town of Gross Hansdorf now. So, if unfamiliar, no worries, didn't know either. Actually, it's right off the A1. We've gone off-road here from the A24 to the A1 and really don't have much battery left. So, it's showing here now, Stefan, please look, 4% and 18 kilometers of remaining range. And now let's see together how far we've actually driven. We've gone 201.4 kilometers, starting at 93%. Average speed, 95.5 kilometers h. That's pretty solid, of course. So, it's kind of like comparing it to a cruise control setting of 120 kilometers per hour in traffic, and then we consume 26.5 kilowatt hours per kilometer. That's quite an impressively large and very significant gulp from the bottle, wouldn't you agree now? That's quite significant, yeah. even though we've slightly slowed down a bit, primarily because we merely wanted to achieve a modest charge in the battery, nothing more. Yes, we can really get to Grosshansdorf, that was the plan after <laughs> all. Just... We haven't really broken a sweat here or anything because yeah. we've been driving an electric car for quite some time now, but 4%, that's still something with rain and 7 degrees. At least it's not raining anymore, but do write in the comments how you see the consumption issue. The pillar also indicates 4%. It's charging now at 19.3 kilodiroth. Since it has essentially set itself to aral pulse, it should have conditioned the battery accordingly. I'm curious to see how this works out here. And actually we should, I don't know if he agrees, also give real praise to aral pulse who have really stepped up in the last months and years. At almost every Aral gas station might be a bit of an exaggeration, but at a very, very many Aral gas stations, they are installing these Aral Pulse chargers here from Alpatronic. Here we have two of these 300 kilowatt Alpatronics as well. I mean, that's really awesome. And they have somewhat stealthily turned into quite an influential charging station guru, haven't they now, Stefan? Yes, a real big player. They're just leveraging their existing infrastructure. Exactly, and um, they're quick to act and do it properly, but now he's really fiddling around here with 19.3 kilobarlers. What's going on here? At 4% state of charge, we should be seeing closer to 150 kilobarlers, right? Let's hope it'll happen soon. Things are really ramping up now. After almost three minutes, it has finally spiked to 59.4 kilobarlers and jumped from 4 to 5%. This is truly a waste of time. I really don't know what kind of games are being played here. We've experienced this during the consumption drive as well. For the first minute, I believe it charged at 60 kilo dao, then it ramped up to 150 kilo dao. I wonder if it's trying to gently build up some heat first or something. Yeah, uh, it's, it's all good, yeah. That doesn't work, does it? But okay, then we know it'll go back up soon. I must say, I'm really getting a pulse, right? Because Arrow uh -huh. Pulse? Yeah, right, we're at Arrow Pulse, aren't we? Now, nearly six minutes have passed. We've charged up four kilowatt hours. It's akin to the BYD pace. Sorry for dwelling on that somewhat. And now it's up to 152.5 kilo dollars at just 10%. So you can see it really significantly jumped up. Honestly, dear friends at Voyable, I don't understand it because we constantly have changing brands. And no matter whether you're at 4%, 8%, 10%, except for B body, of course. When you get there, things really kick into high gear. And that's exactly what we need in electric mobility. Every combustion engine driver who's standing here for four or five minutes, not in the rain, but Stefan, 
Do a quick pan for those who've forgotten. Well covered for about four or five minutes, then kindly fill up once their tank, that indeed is. And then they're back to work work on the track if there's no queue at the checkout or they don't need a pee break. We're standing here for like 20, 30 minutes. And of course we need electric cars that can really put in some elbow grease from the start. Or how do they say it? Basically it's supposed to make it from 10 to 18 in 28 minutes, right? Well, after such a remarkably sluggish start, really. So, achieving 4 out of 74% is quite definitely doable for him, but not quite in just 28 minutes, though. He's currently well. charging it right here at 67.7 kilo. Love. That's certainly not exactly splendid. And we've got about 85 kilometers, I believe, to peel. Technically, we could unplug and go, right? Yes, that should be enough, I'd say. Let's get going. We've continued on the A1 towards Kiel. Yes, we even made room right away for a kind Tesla driver from Denmark, even stopped our charging so he could charge for an internal combustion engine car blocked the second charging spot. That's just how it is sometimes at small gas stations when you retrofit electric charging stations there. Not so easy to link internal combustion engines at the gas pump and those charging at the charging station together. But we all certainly help one another out, don't we indeed? A team within a team. We've just recently arrived in Kiel, staying at our much-loved hotel Kieler Kaufmann, where we consistently love to stay since they indeed provide exceptionally great service and wonderfully warm hospitality. Yes, indeed, we earnestly aim to summarize our journey. We began our travels at Aral Pools with a 70% state of charge, and now we have finally arrived here at Kieler Kaufmann with 39% and a remaining range of precisely 184 kilometers. And of course, we're very eager to take a closer look at the onboard computer with you now in order to fully summarize the entire journey. That means in total, it was 298.8 kilometers. We were able to take a shortcut, achieving an average speed of 91.6 kilometer h. Remember, there was quite a bit of rain too, especially the last part included some country roads and we had a consumption of 25.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now it's six degrees. And yes, that's certainly not little for such a small compact SUV, but perhaps it's also a bit because of its design and such. Due to its proportions, yes, we're now going to check into the hotel, Stefan and I. We've reserved two nice single rooms there, and then I think we'll head back to the Italian place, have another small plate of pasta, and then maybe round off the evening in a really nice way. Yes, and then we'll just go ahead and show you some of our impressions from the weekend, in a small collage here from Kiel, uh, and what activities we engage in here. And we'll be sure to check back in at the latest when we start our journey back to Neustrelitz from the Kiel Kaufmann. Experience the vivid impressions from Kiel. <laughs>
you've already seen the photos, we had quite an experience in Kiel. Even though it was a holiday, several places were still open. Unfortunately, not the museums. Stefan wanted to see the art and maritime museums too. We didn't manage to do that, unfortunately, but at least we got to see the aquarium and some of the hotspots here in and around Kiel. Yes, we were able to charge as well. Not at the Kiel City Utilities, though. Somehow it didn't quite work out the way we thought it would since the pillars were somehow out of operation. But you always find here and there an Arrow Pulse, an EMBW charger or other options, maybe even in a parking garage to charge. So now we have an 85% state of charge for our return trip here from the Kiel Kaufmann back to Neustrelitz, which is great. We're eager to discuss the starting point with you. Yes, indeed, we do have nine degrees here, but it's not 9.04, but rather we had the switch to daylight saving time, so it's 10.04. I don't know why it wasn't done automatically, whether it was an application error, we'll check that out in a moment, or whether the Google automotive system perhaps isn't quite up to the task. Yes, to Neustrelitz, it's around 300 kilometers, depending on how you uh, drive. So there's basically a northern and a southern bypass. North means going through Lübeck, Wismar, Rostock, and then heading south or, so to speak, just north of Hamburg in the region of Rheinbeck, then proceed to take the A24, which we habitually opt for because we've consistently had really excellent experiences with it, and largely because we actually get through quickly, don't we, Stefan? Yeah, that's what we're assuming today. Exactly, we're at 9 degrees, we've got winter tyres on, in 245R19, as we've mentioned on the way there, and then let's just hope we encounter light traffic, and we will always strive to drive at the recommended speed. Why? because the adaptive cruise control in the Volvo only works up to 130 km h. It's probably also some kind of speed discipline measure making you, for convenience, not going over 130 km h, right? <laughs> yes. Not quite as cool. No. Let us carefully check the onboard computer once more before we finally depart from Kiel. So, we've driven 458.6 km to get to Kiel, average speed 52.6 km h, and we've had a consumption of 23.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We've got the single engine with extended range, basically meaning rear wheel drive, 200 kilowatts, 272 horsepower, and the large battery with 69 kilowatt hour gross and 64 kilowatt hour net. Kilowatt hours net. Yes, today's journey essentially started at the Kiel Kaufmann. Have been traveling 3.2 kilometers now, strolling through Kiel at an average of 28 kilometer h. There, the rate is 14.8 kilowatt hours for every 100 kilometers. So, it appears he's actually an expert in city efficiency, my good friend, correct? Yes, that's him. We're leaving the freeway heading straight into Wittenberg. In Wittenberg, it has truly become a significant shopping hub. The Tesla superchargers were the first then, I believe, the fastened charger next to the Tesla ones, followed by the Aral gas station. Aral Pulse with two Alpatronic columns, and now a large station with Ionity has been added. And moreover, there are additional charging options here in Wittenberg, which I'm not familiar with at all. Wittenberg is quite conveniently located, so to speak, about 30 kilometers before Hamburg, and behind Hamburg, roughly 40 kilometers. Yes, if not even perhaps a bit more, definitely 50, 60 kilometers. Definitely by the A24. So. If you ever need to charge, you should always find a free station here, I hope. And we don't really need to charge. We still have 31% battery left. The display also shows 147 kilometers remaining, but the bladder is pressing and I kind of feel like having a coffee, but let's see what the consumption has been like so far. So in total, we've driven 601.8 kilometer, average speed 59 kilometer h, 23.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and today from Kiel to here 146.2 km with an average speed of 91 kilometers per hour and a consumption rate that currently sits at exactly 23.4 kilowatt hours for every single 100 kilometers traveled is then the precisely calculated energy consumption rate so from that perspective I think there's still room for improvement in the software because just because I switch to a different menu doesn't mean I want to end navigation. Yes, indeed, there are two very efficient Alpitronics chargers at the Aral station, and we're going to plug in here to charge up a bit, ensuring that we can safely and without any issues get to Neustrelitz. From here, it actually is also more than 100 kilometers. 
and we do really want to start making a move onwards today. It just keeps going. I'll just make an emergency stop because there's a car. So uh, I don't know, Volvo, the software, it's definitely here and there still, unfortunately, riddled with a few bugs. Stefan, right? What do you think? Definitely in need of improvement, for sure. By the way, you can, of course, set the time zone to automatically adjust to the 24-hour clock. Wasn't set for the participants here. That's why Stefan kindly took care of it. And now we have the correct time as well. What? Brilliant. The Volvo jumped right up to 149.7 kilobottles. We simply entered the charging station as the destination, so we didn't build a bridge between the final address and the charging station as an intermediate stop. However, the advanced technology on board enables the vehicle to quickly achieve the highest possible charging peak. That is actually quite a very great thing, isn't it, really? Feel free to keep going like that. By the way, I must correct myself, because at first, there were only the two Alphatonic on your right side. Now, Aral, because this specific location is also exceptionally very, very busy, we've often found ourselves charging in groups of four or even weighted, has added another two Alpitronics on the left side. I think it's really fantastic how things are progressing here. And by the way, there's also delicious, affordable coffee and a very clean restroom available. So just like magic, a quick 15 minute charge. Stefan, look, 16 minutes, 46 seconds, and we've added 25.6 kilowatt hours. It's now at 69% state of charge. Regarding the image at 66.4 kilo, I would say that's really enough for us to get home. We can charge again when we get home, so let's keep going. Somehow, I can't quite grasp the logic of the Volvo's onboard computer. It's either user error or it needs a bit of tweaking. We're at 68% battery life. We've driven this stretch, still have 326 kilometer range left. Looking at our destination here, it's 167 kilometers away nearly half and we'll arrive with a 9% state of charge. So that's like a difference of about, feels like 20% battery life. Here, we're assuming it probably bases this on the WLTP consumption. Otherwise, I simply cannot imagine this specific range at 68% at all, really. And the system here in Google Maps, Google Automotive, seems to then recalculate the consumption of the current drive of the onboard computer into the state of charge here at the destination. So in some particular way, it's truly confusing. It should in some specific manner be at least a bit similar, right? That certainly needs to be balanced out properly because something is definitely not quite right there, I believe. Well, here we are once again, my friends. We're departing the highway to cover the last few scenic kilometers through the beautiful lush countryside to Neustrelitz. Yes, it appears that the level of consumption has somewhat stabilized a bit, hasn't it? We're projected to arrive at our destination with 13% battery, still got 72 kilometers to go. But since we're taking somewhat of a shortcut here, I believe it will probably manage to shave off a few additional kilometers as well. Yes, we want to. Great, now I've canceled the navigation here because it keeps happening. When you exit the menu, thank you very much indeed, Volvo, for programming it so incredibly cleverly. Yes, in total, we have driven exactly a distance of 245.7 kilometers. We managed an average speed of 100.1 kilometer h and consumed 23.5 kilowatt hours. That means we were actually always driving at 130 km h with the adaptive cruise control. I think that's pretty okay now at 14 degrees, right, Stefan? What do you say? Oh. Absolutely. And overall, with the Volvo, as we can see here quite nicely, again, we've driven 701.8 kilometers at an average speed of 63.4 kilometer h and have used 23.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This means the Volvo actually performs quite solidly on the long haul. And now we're going to green up a bit more across the countryside. And then in the end, we'll also come to a conclusion, right? Then we'll head upstairs. And I'll restart the navigation now. Oh, never mind, it didn't close. I didn't press it down properly, did I? Very good indeed. It works, doesn't it? So not a user error. No. We're essentially in the final home stretch now, so to speak, and truly want to seize this perfect opportunity to recap everything with you. 3.6 kilometers still ahead of us. We've got 19% battery left. We also managed to cut 19 kilometers by not letting ourselves be guided via the highway, but essentially by taking a shortcut cross country. So that in total, we ended up driving 295.9 kilometers with an average speed of 93. 
traveling at a speed of 6 km h and it consumed 22.6 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, which in my opinion I find actually quite decent, honestly. We really mustn't forget, this happens to be a very small, quite compact SUV, which isn't exactly enjoying the most efficient aerodynamic design available. Volvo does a great job with that. We covered a total of 752.2 km with an average speed of 63.9 km h. Just a few days ago when we set off, it was much colder and rainy. I must also remember that we're looking at a total consumption, including the drives in Kiel and around Kiel, of 23.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Stefan, what's your opinion? Oh, that is perfectly all right, I'd say. Travel comfort, what does your butter meter say? Totally relaxed, so absolutely nothing at all hurts here. Yes, and just the two of us managed to bring all our luggage for our business meeting, for our little bit of sightseeing on the side. So, one could say, an all-around successful car, with which you can also take beautiful trips. Just a 150 kilo of charging peak, and then roughly under 30 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%. That's substantial and adds significant value to the car, making it far more versatile than some other smaller vehicles that you might only be able to use in an urban setting, simply because they lack this charging performance achieved. Yes, besides that, we've observed and identified a couple of significant bugs in the Volvo system here. We should handle that gently and carefully because we know all beginnings are hard, and especially now with the Google Automotive system being adapted to a newly developed vehicle, I think we should give Volvo a grace period of 180 days. After all, Apple CarPlay is expected to become an optional add-on through a software update, which I would really welcome. Because I use an American smartphone, and it can be beautifully integrated into the screen. And so I believe if you set aside the gross list price, where all electric cars are still rather high end, it is possible to get very, very good. Leasing and financing deals, or even through the Volvo subscription for those who might want flexibility and also the option to opt out at short notice. So from that perspective, feel free to check in with your trusted Volvo dealer, take a test drive. I believe there are over 1,000 test vehicles available in Germany, even for more than 24 hours with a charging card, so you can essentially get a complete impression of the Volvo EX30 in all its variants. We're back, and with that, we've reached today's video content end. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, and please do check again if you're part of the Simple Electric community. We'd be thrilled if you could support us by subscribing and that way you won't miss any future videos with the latest subjects. Stay healthy. See you soon. You're Ollie. You, Stefan. Uh -huh. What I'd really like in this car, which isn't included in the Plus package, is the 360 degree camera. Then you'd have this nice camera system with a surround view. For that, you'd have to go for the Ultra package, then with extra features. I think I'd treat myself. What do you say? Actually, it really is quite cool, isn't it? I'd certainly do it too.